بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم We greet you from uh, my sitting room here in the Caribbean island of Trinidad on this the 14th day of the blessed month of Ramadan with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and Ramadan Kareem The Jews for recitation of the Quran on this the 14th day of the month is Surah Al-Anbiya and Surah Al-Hajj. Uh, but for those of you who started the fast of Ramadan on Yawm Saturday, we started, <coughs> excuse me, on Yawm Ahad Sunday, you'll have a different rituals. If you want to know which are the ajza for the recitation for each day of the month, Kindly don't send me an email to ask me when you can do the homework. Just go to my website, imranhussein.org, and download my book entitled The Quran and the Moon. Also, if you are a sister and you want to know how to complete the recitation of the Quran when you have to inter interrupt your recitation for a certain time every month, don't send me yet. Another email, I've answered the question a thousand times already. Okay, <laughs> let's go to my book, The Quran and the Moon, and read it and you get your answer there. We've been giving these short talks, and now we've reached the month, the middle of the month of Ramadan. Uh, tonight, the end of the 14th day, uh, in the Urdu language, they call it Chaudhuikachan, the moon of the 14th. But it's not a full moon. The, mo the full moon is either between the 14th and the 15th, okay? Uh, because a month can have 29 days or it can have uh, 30 days. And so <coughs> we are moving now towards the middle of the month and there are only two weeks left in Blessed Ramadan. If you have not uh, given your zakat as yet, do please make sure you give your zakat uh, in Ramadan. Uh, this is the time traditionally the zakat is given, and this is the month for giving uh, sadaqah. Uh, you will find my uh, email address at the bottom of the screen. If you've given sadaqah already and you have more sadaqah or zakat to give and you want to send it to me, do please send me an email. You'll find my email address at the bottom of the screen, and I'll be very happy to receive your zakat and sadaka because there are many people who are waiting for me to help them uh, with zakat and, and sadaka. Now then, we have been giving you these talks every day of Ramadan uh, in teaching you how to study the Quran. Perhaps the difficult, the most difficult subject of all in the Quran is not Gag, Gag, and Magag, but rather the Antichrist or Dajjal. Uh, if you are a Christian or a Jew and you're listening to these lectures, do please remember, I am not presenting the subject of Gog and Magog from the Bible. And I'm not making any comparative study between the Quran and the Bible. I'm not doing that. I am restricting myself to teaching the subject as it appears in the Quran as it's located in the Quran. And we have gotten from the Quran this, this the profile of Gog and Magog, that they are number one, human beings. Number two, they have PhD in co corrupting the earth and a corruption which is destructive. It's called facade. Number three, they were located north of the Caucasus mountains. Number four, the doors that Allah says about them that I have created creatures of mine so powerful that none but I can destroy them. So Zulkarnain could not destroy them. What he could do is to contain them, or I like the term, to checkmate them. And that's what he did. And we know from the Quran that Gog and Magog are to be checkmated a second time because of the term Karnain. So there is a second check meeting to come, which has not yet come. We know that the first time they appeared, that Zulkarnain appeared to deal with 
uh, use his power was in the region of the Black Sea. So when the second time is to come of the Carnate, it will be in the region of the Black Sea that we have to look to see power resting on the foundations of faith and that power using to resist the oppressor. That power is destined to checkmate Gog and Gog one more time. And then we found that in Surah to um, Ambiya, the Quran gives us more information on Gog and Gog. I'm just repeating for you now. And this is, of course, for beginners, because those of you who've been listening for several years, you know this subject very well uh, already. That when Gog and Magog are released from a barrier built by Zulkarnain, <coughs> Allah will bring down that barrier, they will eventually spread out all over the world. And they will bring about a world order. They'll bring into being a world order in which power will use to oppress all of mankind. And that power will use to corrupt and to destroy. And then you will see that Gog and Magog, which was spread out all over the world, would bring the people back to that town. The town is Jerusalem. And when they are brought back to Jerusalem, 2,000 years after Allah had destroyed them, and they re restore a state of, of uh, Israel in Jerusalem, and that Israel is poised to replace the United States as the next ruling state in the world, you know that Gog and Magog have prepared the way for someone known as the Antichrist. And that's our subject today. We're beginning, <coughs> excuse me, we're introducing the subject today. For some of you as beginners, you never heard about the term Dajjal, the false messiah, the Antichrist. For some of you who are Christians or Jews, you don't know anything of what the Quran has to say on the subject or what Prophet Muhammad has to say on the subject. Well, the first thing we know is that our Prophet referred to him as al masih dajjal meaning Dajjal who will claim to be the Messiah. An al masih I am the Messiah. But the Quran is very plain and clear as daylight that the Messiah is Jesus, the son of the Virgin Mary. He is the Messiah. So this fellow is making, <laughs> excuse me, a false claim to be the Messiah. So we know him as the false Messiah. And he's, he's known as Dajjal because he has a PhD in deception. Everything connected with him is deception. Hmm? He, he takes the road to heaven and makes it look like the road to hell. And he takes the road to hell every night on television and he makes it look like the road to heaven. So in the age of the Jal, things are not what they appear to be. Appearance and reality are different from each other. And when the Quran begins to address the subject of the Jal, it does so without mentioning him by name. But our Prophet did speak about one surah of the Quran directly connected with the Jal, and that is Surah Al Kaf, or the 18th surah, the surah of the cave. And in that surah, the most important passage in the whole Quran appears connected with the Jal. And what is it? The Quran tells us about someone who has this nickname of Khidr, Green. He's known as Green. Uh, when I'm teaching the children, I call him Mr. Green. <laughs> and uh, he's called the Green Man because our prophet said, he came to a land which was barren and dry. And when he sat down, everything became lush green. And so his profile of knowledge, his personality, his spiritual profile, 
is one akin to raindrops falling from the sky. This is not the man of conventional knowledge at all. This is a man who brings knowledge like a fresh breeze. A man who brings knowledge in such a way that it brings the dead heart back to life. It changes your life, Mr. Green. And uh, he is someone who receives knowledge directly from Allah. Oh, but the epistemology which has come from the Jaz, modern Western civilization, is that knowledge comes only from observation, experimentation, rational inquiry. That is the scientific method. But the Quran gives us another epistemology. <laughs> that the knowledge can come from another world. Knowledge comes to Khidr directly from Allah. وَعَلَّمْ بَعْدَهُ زُبِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَجِيبِ وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّ عِلْمَ And we granted him knowledge from ourselves, directly from Allah. This is knowledge which, is, which comes to internal intuitive spiritual insight and that's not possible unless you have light in your heart no it's called no and it's not sold in the stock market and in this passage of the quran conventional knowledge comes in contact with the knowledge of khidr that's the substance of the passage. And <laughs> Musa alayhi salam, or Moses, is merely meant to represent the conventional knowledge of the Israelite people. And the rest of the conventional knowledge that you have today in the Darul Uloom of Islam and the seminaries of the Christian world and so on, conventional knowledge. But Khidr is a different profile of knowledge. Knowledge of one who's, who, who has knowledge directly from Allah, like a river flowing down from him, from Allah. But something else about his profile. Not only does he have knowledge received directly from Allah internally, but in addition to that, أَتَيْنَهُ رَحْمَةِ minna, We gave him kindness. He has a profile of kindness and compassion. So when you see kindness and compassion in the personality of a scholar, and that scholar has this insight, intuitive, internal, spiritual insight with know from Allah, you have the scholar who is this scholar par excellence of Akhiru Zaman, the only scholar who can discuss, who can discover the footprints of Dajjal. And in this passage, Musa, Lisa, Moses is told that there's someone more learned than he is. He claimed that he's the most learned of all men. We know that, that the Jews declare, the Israelites, that they are the chosen people of the Lord God. They are the intellectual elite of mankind. No, my friend, you're not. You're not. Get rid of that nonsense. You're not the intellectual elite of mankind. You're not the chosen people of the Lord God. If not, if you are the chosen people of the Lord, why does he punish you? Mm -hmm. Why don't you seek death because you're going to heaven? Huh? So, Musa al Islam said, well, I want to meet this man who is more learned than me. And Allah directs him to Majma'ul Bahrain. That's where you'll meet him. Majma'ul Bahrain is the meeting of the two oceans. And the two oceans are the ocean of knowledge internally acquired and the ocean of knowledge externally, internally received and externally acquired. When these two oceans of knowledge are harmoniously integrated, 
as they were in Dr. Iqbal, as they were in my teacher, blessed memory, Maulana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Ansari, but you don't find it in your conventional institutions of learning today, like the Darul Ulum. When you find these two oceans of knowledge harmoniously integrated into a whole, that's where you will find the most learned of all men, the one who is capable of understanding the subject of Dajjal and explaining it to you. That's enough for today. Uh, tomorrow, we'll tell you about the journey of Khidr alayhi salam with Moses. Uh, the only thing I want to add today is I have a very dear Orthodox Christian brother who is a scholar, a scholar of the gospel. Uh, we love each other very much. And uh, he said to me, Sheikh Imran, that man, that profile of Khidr alayhi salam that you have, he is exactly the profile of Jesus. Yes, and so it caused me to reflect and reflect because we do not identify Khidr with anyone. We identify him as a, as a model of scholarship. And he said, this is Jesus. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might bless us with nur, light in the heart and with kindness and compassion for others and bless us with knowledge coming directly from above and bless us to be able to reach Majma'ul Bahrain, the place where the two oceans meet. And with that knowledge, we may be able to penetrate the reality of the world today, which is a world in the total control of Dajjal. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.